Okay, pulling out of the driveway, so we know what that means. It's time for Drive to Work. Okay, today's show, I thought I would try, I, I keep experimenting with this podcast, because I've never done this before, uh, and I'm trying to do different topics. Um, early on, I was doing a lot of, of sets I'd worked on, but I, I realized pretty quickly that, well, I worked on a lot, I would run out of them, uh, so I've been trying to expand. So today, I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to talk about a mechanic. Today, I'm going to talk about cycling. So why did I pick cycling? Um, well, for starters, uh, it is a mechanic we've used more than any other mechanic. I mean, barring evergreen mechanics, uh, it is the, you know, the mechanic that we brought back the most number of times. Um, and so it's an interesting mechanic. It's interesting to design for. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about the history of the mechanic, and then I'd talk about sort of uh, how we designed for it. And mostly what I wanted, I- I'm hoping today to be is talk about kind of the evolution of a mechanic um, and talk about how, you know, once upon a time, when magic first began, we tend to think of mechanics as um, disposable things. Like, you'd have a mechanic, you use it up, throw it away, done. Uh, and eventually, what we, we got to the conclusion of, okay, that's kind of dumb. Like, these are good... <laughs> yeah, I mean, not all, not all mechanics necessarily want to be repeated, but when we get a good mechanic that we think there's, you know, a lot of design space for, why wouldn't we want to do it again? And we started thinking the more of, uh, of tools, you know, that for, the, for a certain job, you need certain tools, and that cycling has a nice... You know, it has a nice uh, role it plays, and so a lot of sets really can use cycling. So anyway, let me start with the history of cycling, and then I'll talk about sort of its functions. So, trivia question, who designed cycling? dun dun dun, dun. The answer is Richard Garfield. For what set was cycling designed for? The answer, Tempest. Yes. So what happened was, I talked about this in my podcast on Tempest, um... Richard had not done any design since Arabian Nights. Um, in my quest to become a designer, I got Richard to agree to be on Tempest. And so one of the things that was fun for Tempest was uh, Mike Elliott and I, who had never been on a design team, were just pouring out design ideas we've had. And Richard, who hadn't designed for a couple of years, had pent up a bunch of ideas. So one of the ideas he had was for a couple of cards with cycling on them. I think, by the way, I think he actually called them cycling. Um, if not cycling, it might have been called sliding. But it, 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 I, I believe we actually called it cycling. I think the name never changed. Um, and uh, in Tempest Design, it was just on a couple of cards. I think that um, Richard's idea was, originally was, they just went on to cards that were, eh, cards you didn't need all the time. They were cards that were, you know, narrow cards. So that if, you know, you put it in your deck and didn't need it, I think the very first one he made went on Tranquility. Uh, so the idea is, well, sometimes you want tranquility, but sometimes it's useless to you. Uh, and so I think what Richard really liked with the idea of cycling is just, oh, well, here's the card that's a sometimes card, and then if you don't need it, oh, you can just trade it in for another card. Um, and so it's, it started there. Um, I think cycling, two was, at the time, we had kind of come to the conclusion that cantrips had cost two, meaning if you get a card over and above, the cost of the card was about two. And so somehow in, in our minds at the time, like, two equaled a card. Um, so anyway, uh, Richard made, my memory is like two or three cards. A Tempest Design, when I handed over the file, had cycling in it. And it was just on a couple cards. Um, I think it was keyworded just because um, I tend to like to keyword things. And so I, a lot of times in files, sometimes I'll keyword things especially back in the day, even if they didn't need the keyword, just to kind of show people they were connected. I still do that in design now, so that people can recognize a connection between things. Um, and, and we're a little more likely to keyword than we once were in the actual release product. Once upon a time, we, we you know, each set had two keywords, and so only two things could be keyworded. Um, but in design, I always like to identify things. Anyway, I, I, I'm pretty sure it was identified in the design file. But in my head was, it wasn't going to be something that was going to be a keyword. It was just going to be something on a couple cards. Um, so one of the notes that I got on Tempest Design from development was there was too much in it. Because uh, the design team all were just dying to make things. And so we, we stuffed it to the gills. It had lots of stuff going on. And in fact, not only was cycling in Tempest Design, Echo was in Tempest Design. Uh, and both abilities got taken out. And then Mike Elliott, who did Urza Saga the next year, used both of them. Um, and so both of the Urza Saga keyword mechanics were actually from Tempest Design. Um, Elliott had made Echo, and Richard had made Cycling. Okay, so Cycling shows up for the first time in Urza Saga. Um, 
So th- we did something interesting with cycling. I, I'd like to believe at the time we understood that it was a deep mechanic. Like, maybe in the back of our heads, we kind of got it was something that there was more. Because we did something very interesting in, in Urza Saga, which is we did Cycling 2. The only cycling you saw was Cycling 2. I remember at the time people asked us because, you know, it was, it was Cycling 2, but every single card is Cycling 2. Why do we bother putting the 2? Why not just call it Cycling? And then Cycling Cycle for 2. Um, and I think the answer is we knew that Cycling was a pretty deep mechanic. Um, and let me answer this. I get asked this question all the time, so I might as well answer it now, which is, how do we know if a mechanic is a, a shallow or deep mechanic? Uh, I know recently I've been talking a bit in my column about overload, and one of my comments is that overload is a lot shallower mechanic than it looks. There's not as many cards that you can make with it as you think. Um, and the answer has to do with a, a couple of things. First is, how many different kinds of cards can you put the mechanic on? Like, cycling is beautiful in that... Any card can have cycling. It doesn't matter. Instants, sorceries, enchantments, artifacts, land, creatures, obviously. Anything can have cycling. So that increases it because it can go in any card. Second is kind of what needs does it have, you know. For example, Overload has to have a targeted effect that hits one thing that you would want to pay extra to hit many things, you know. And that, that is a much narrower subset. Cycling, well... Cycling kind of wants to be on something that you would um, want to cycle. So uh, putting cycling on cards that you really don't want to get rid of is not ideal. But other than that, you know, cycling is pretty useful because one of the neat things about cycling is a lot of times early in the game, it's like, I need land, you know, I, 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 have my two, I got two lands in my open hand and I'm not seeing land. Okay, well, I'm willing to throw away whatever this is to get more chances to get land because if I don't get land, I'm going to lose the game. Um, so cycling is, is much flexible. So, so a big part is how many things can go on, how narrow are the effects that happens. Um, and then also, like, can it go at common? You know, cycling is a good card in that it's simple, it can go common. If you can't go at common, there's just less things you can do. Um, and how many of the card in mass? Uh, some mechanics have a threshold to them. And so, you know, like it, it, uh, you only have, you only have so much because you don't want to have too much in your set. But cycling, yeah, you can have a whole bunch of cycling cards. It doesn't particularly, I mean, when we get to Onslaught, I'll talk about integration of it. But, uh, you know, it, another big thing is how many can you have? How many can a deck have? And that things that are way too heavy make it hard to do that. But anyway, cycling plays well in all of these, right? It can go in any card. Its effect can go on most effects. You know, it, it, it doesn't weigh against itself. So if, you, if people get a lot of cycling cards in Limited, it's not a problem. You know, uh, but it's not linear. Uh, like I said, until we get to Onslaught, it's not linear. Like, you know, have as many as you want. Um, so anyway, we put cycling into Urza Saga. We made them all cycling too. Um, I mean, we experimented a bit. We, we had a land cycle. You know, we, we put it on a lot of different kinds of cards. But, and essentially, in the first time we used it, it was mostly the way Richard had used it in Tempest Design, which was, let's take cards that you might not always want, and then you can cycle them away. Now, the funny thing is we made, we made a few errors. The classic error was, horrible my card names, uh, there was a terror, you know, a Dark Vanishing, uh, that you could cycle away. Um, and the problem there was, especially in Limited, is like, when are you cycling away a kill card? When you go, you know what I want instead of this kill card? Another card. Now, look, if you're tight on land or late game where you somehow need an answer that that's not going to solve, I mean, I'm not saying there's never situations where you cycle it away, but uh, one of the things we learned from doing cycling in uh, Urza Saga was you have to be careful that putting on a card that people don't want to cycle away, even if sometimes they're supposed to do it, just makes bad feeling, and that you kind of want to put on cards where people, like, sometimes honestly want to cycle it away, you know, and not in weird circumstances, but normally they might want to cycle away, cycle it away. Um, so anyway, we did cycling, we put in all three sets, done. Okay, flash forward, I don't know, uh, how, many, how much later, uh, three, four years later, um, and we are working on Onslaught. So, one of the things that cycling does uh, is, one of the things that we like in design is what we call mana smoothing, which says, uh, mana is a big part of the game, and, you know, we want to make sure that we help players who are knowledgeable understand how to help themselves with mana, so that they can, for example, uh, 
you know, allow people to push how much land they play so when they get extra land, there's a use for that extra land. You know, that the mana could be used in some way or uh, sometimes, uh, like with cycling, uh, the mechanic itself it just helps get you to land. So if you're land light, something can get you to the land. Um, and so uh, deck smoothing is something in which every set, we want to have some tool for the experienced player to help mitigate a little bit uh, the mana system. And one of these podcasts, I'll talk about the mana system. Uh, it is a much maligned thing that I, I think uh, does so much good that people just don't quite understand. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> that's another podcast. Uh, but I, I do recognize that we do want to do some mana smoothing. So we were working on Onslaught, and we were trying to come up with, we needed one more mechanic. And I remember at the time, uh, the notes was, we want a cycling-like mechanic. So here's a, a little story, nothing to do with magic, but uh, it, it's it kind of the thing that inspired me here. Um, so there's a very famous story where uh, Woody Allen, the director, was casting a movie, and so in the script, he put a Daryl Hannah-like star, because um, he was trying to sort of evoke something, and he wanted to give people an idea of what he was trying to evoke. Um, so Daryl Hannah sees this, and then comes and says, how about me? I'm a Daryl Hannah-like star. And they ended up using her. And she just has a cameo in, I forget what movie it is, but one of his uh, like mid-movies. Um, and I, the same kind of thing happened for me, which is, well, we want mechanic-like cycling. And I, so I said, how about cycling? Cycling is like cycling. Um, at the time, we never, we never reused a named mechanic. Uh, we had reused unnamed mechanics, like, like pitch cards we had redone and obviously cycling. But pretty much, if it was a keyword mechanic, either we had evergreened it or we had never re re reused it again. Um, and I was saying, well, how about we brought it back? Like, you know, because I was really into the idea of, look, these are tools. When we need them, use them. We had used it for a while. Hey, just bring it back. Cycling does the job. Um, and the response was, oh, we kind of done before. So I said, well, but I, I think we could do something different with it. And so the response was, okay, you show us something different with it, you know, and maybe we'll consider it. So first I came back and said, okay, well, obviously, we did cycling too. We could just do, you know, cycling for other costs, especially we do cycling for mana costs. Um, and I suggested the idea of, you know, a, a land cycle, and instead of cycling for two, cycles for C, you know, of, of that color. So the idea is, you know, if I have too many swamps, well, I could cycle it, you know, I could cycle it away because I don't need this color. Um, and they said, okay, well, that's interesting, but that's, that's not really different enough. Um, and then I said, oh, okay, um, how about um, if there were things that cared about cycling? And they said, tell us more. So I made the card Lightning Rift. Uh, and, 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 and funny thing is, I, I joke now that, you know, the, whenever you do thing X, do, do two damage has become almost a staple of, of a lot of sets. But this was the first time we had ever done it. Uh, and the idea was, okay, well, here's a card that, that looks at cycling, goes, whenever something cycles, okay, I can do damage. Um, and I think my original version, there wasn't mana tied to it. Um, uh, but anyway, the, they saw that, and they go, okay, that's interesting. Um, and then I pitched the idea of what if there were cards that when you cycled them did a smaller version of the effect. So it wasn't nothing... But the idea was, uh, card could do big effect, or you could cycle it, get the card, and do small effect. So, kind of turn the card into a split card. Um, I joke that all, all, all cards are essentially kicker or split cards. Um, and in some ways, cycling was this, this uh, kicker card that I turned into a split card. Um, and so the idea, so anyway, I pitched a couple different ways to do it. And, and I think they said, okay, well, those seem different, and cycling seems like it would do good things here. Um, and so, uh, I got them to agree to put cycling into Onslaught. Um, and during Onslaught block, I mean, we definitely messed around with, with different costs. Uh, there's still mana cost. Um, and, uh, although I guess uh, near the end of the block, we did mess around w with life costs. Um, did we? Is that the, okay. That's right. My memory plays. But anyway, we messed around with mana costs. Uh, we messed around with, um, with small tr tr uh, cycling triggers. Uh, we messed around with uh, things that cared about cycling. Um, and then the funny story is at the end of the block, um, they... Uh, so what had happened during Urza Saga was um, I had done a variant on cycling in Urza's Destiny. 
uh, what I called uh, it was from play cycling. And the idea was um, uh, normally cycling is in your hand. If you don't need it, you can spend two, you lose the card, and then you replace it by drawing a card. And so the idea in Rosa Saga was, well, let's apply that to things in play. And so I have this card in play, and I pay two, and I lose the card. I sack it since it's in play, and then I get to draw a card. And I thought that was very clever, um, and it came out, and nobody saw it as cycling. Just nobody even thought of it as cycling. Um, and I would, like, write articles and talk about cycling from play, and people were like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I never saw that, you know. So, anyway, Brian Tinsman is, uh, was in charge of Scourge, and so he came up with this mechanic where you could take a card in your hand, and you could get rid of it to go get a particular basic land. So you had a red creature that if you needed a mountain, you could trade it to get a mountain. And so I said to him, I said, so it's like cycling, but you can get a mountain. And he goes, yeah. I go, well, why don't you just call it mountain cycling? And Brian said, well, why would we need to do that? He goes, I mean, this way it'll sound like a new mechanic. I go, well, yeah, but we have a set in which you give up cards in your hand and you go get cards on your library, and there's other cards that care that you've done that. Um, like, it seems like let's integrate it. And then I told him the story of the cycling from play, I'm like, you know, I feel like, you know, this is supposed to connect to that. People won't see the connection. Uh, and that one of the things I've learned is sometimes you have to be a little not so subtle. you got to be blunt. And so I convinced him to name it, you know, blank cycling. Uh, and he ended up doing it. Um, so then that was another thing we sort of evolved. And that said, oh, well, now just rather than cycling for a card at the top of the library, now maybe you can go get something. Um, anyway, let's flash forward to the next time. Uh, so the next time we used it was in Time Spiral. Now, Time Spiral didn't use it all that much. In fact, it appears once there's a Swamp Cycler on the Time Shifted Cheat. Uh, and then all the other cards, there's only six, I think, were in Future Sight. Um, I used it in a couple ways in Future Sight. One was I did this thing called Mix and Match, where I would take mechanics and put them with other mechanics and then have the two of them work together. Um, in fact, by the way, I, I, I jumped ahead. There actually is uh, cycling shows up in four blocks, but it shows up once, not in those four blocks. Uh, and the answer is it shows up in Unhinged. Um, Mark Gottlieb had made a card called Blast from the Path and, and Old Fogey. Uh, and Blast from the Path just was a burn spell that used every mechanic that maybe you'd want on a burn spell. Um, and so one of the ones on it was um, cycling. Uh, and uh, that card inspired in Future Sight the mix and match cards because uh, when I wrote the FAQ for Unhinged I sort of took all the different things and said what happens when this mechanic means that mechanic it's good when this mechanic means that mechanic it's good this mechanic means that mechanic not so good you know and um, I realized it was fun that it's fun to just kind of take mechanics from all over and mix them together and because somehow in the back of my head I wanted Future Sight to be the most complicated set of all time uh, I said hey let's go take some mechanics and mix and match them and so there's mechanics from all over Magic and cycling hadn't even appeared until, and other than on the time shifter sheet, in the block, but I used it in uh, Future Sight. Um, also, I took advantage of the, you know, the mountain cycling kind of stuff to, to hint at the future. And I think I had, uh, what was it, wizard cycling? Um, the idea is, oh, well, it's, like, it's like cycling, but you go get a wizard. Um, and, and slivers, did I make sliver cycling? Sliver cycling might have, uh, anyway. Uh, I definitely in Time Spiral sort of upped it a little bit, mix and matched it, sort of showed kind of where you could go with cycling. Since I recognized that cycling was something that had a lot of still potential in it, that was me kind of demonstrating where we could go. Um, okay, so the last, uh, the last block thus far that had cycling in it was Shards of Alara. So Shards of Alara was designed by Bill Rose, uh, the VP of R&D. Um, and so Bill knew that he wanted to do a, a three-color set, um, and Bill was very concerned. Bill is definitely a designer that is very structural. And so Bill wanted to make sure that, you know, we'd built into it means by which to make sure you could play your cards. Um, and so one of the ideas that Bill had, and very early, was let's bring cycling back. Um, he felt like cycling, uh, not just cycling, we bring cycling back and we could bring, you know, land cycling back, you know, mountain cycling, forest cycling, and such. Um, and then they came up with the idea of basic land cycling. So the idea of, here's cards that can go get you whatever, whatever basic land you need. 
Um, and so that was in very early in, I mean, because Charger Lotto went through all sorts of changes, but cycling was one of the first things in the set. In fact, it might be the first mechanic that was in the set, uh, and it stayed all the way through. Um, and once again, uh, I mean, I think basic land cycling was really the only innovation on cycling in that block. Um, once again, I, I might be forgetting something, but uh, I mean, I, there wasn't any giant leap. Uh, I mean, Time Spiral had hinted at places we could go, uh, but we, we, we really, in Time Spiral, I'm sorry, in uh, Charge of Lottery, we really didn't. I, and I think the reason was that, so in, in a set, um, there are, there's what I call the marquee mechanic, and there's supporting mechanics. And the role of the marquee mechanic is to sell the set, is to go, hey, look at this thing. Ooh, la, la, this is exciting. Um, and the supporting mechanics are like, they make it run, they make it work. Um, and one of the things that's important is to understand, is your mechanic uh, a marquee mechanic, or is it just a support mechanic? Because you make different choices in how you use the mechanic. If it's the marquee mechanic, you are definitely making some extra splashy cards, and you're, you're trying to sort of make cards that you can preview, and that, you know, something that really will excite people. Where the support mechanic, that's not his job. His job is to get in, get out, you know, do what needs to get done, and make it play well. And when you bring back mechanics, usually they're support mechanics. I mean, not always. If people really like something and you haven't had it for a while, sometimes the return of a really popular mechanic. Um, the, the example, for example, uh, is Innistrad had double face cards. That was a giant thing, obviously very splashy. Um, now, when we bring it back, and we're not going to bring it back in the, anytime soon, by the way, but when we bring it back, and I know one day we will, um, that was a pretty high-profile thing. It will be a high-profile thing when it comes back. So, it's possible that might be a marquee mechanic. Um, but cycling, this was the fourth time we had cycling. Bill's purpose of putting it in the set was really a support means. Like, I want people to do this cool thing, and I just need to make sure they have a way to do that. Um, and so... Um, it really was a support mechanic, and like I said, support mechanics aren't meant to draw attention to themselves. They're meant to make the game play well. Um, uh, and, and it's possible, like, in order for cycling to be a marquee mechanic, we would have to do something pretty crazy with it and go, cycling's back, but man, look at what we're doing with cycling. Um, and the reason I don't think we're going to go all that far uh, is one of the things that, that I've learned over time is I like for mechanics to have their space, um, and the reality is, you can stretch mechanics to do what other mechanics do. You know, Kicker essentially, and one of my big flaws to me of Kicker, is it kind of can do anything. And that, I want to be able to do something new and not people go, oh, that's just Kicker. You know, I want to build something new. And, and, and so, we tend to sort of figure out what a mechanic does well, and then isolate that mechanic there, and have it do that thing. And cycling, each mechanic has an identity to it. And so, I feel the identity for cycling is all about sort of, opting out of saying, you know, often in Magic, you're like, oh, I wish I didn't have this card. And that's what cycling really is. That's what Richard, I think, at, 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 I think most mechanics, when you get down to the root, is recognizing some moment that happens normally in games where players go, I wish this, and go, oh, well, this mechanic is going to let you get your wish. And there's plenty of times where I think, you know, you draw, let's say, a really expensive card, and, you know, you just don't have the man, and you're like, oh, why is this in my hand? I can't use this. Man, if this were just another card, you know, and I think that mentality is exactly, I'm sure Richard probably just had that happen one game and said, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, let, let's answer that, you know. And I, I, the funny thing for me is a lot of mechanics that I've made have been exactly that. I mean, flashback was just me going, wouldn't it be cool if, you know, I could reuse my spell, you know, if I could cast it and then take out the graveyard and cast it again. Um, and that I think... Um, that, that cycling one of the reasons it's, it is, it's such a good mechanic is A, it, has, it answers this natural desire of the game and B, it is just very it's very versatile it's, it has a lot of design space um, and it does its job here's another thing that I think is important to understand is um, you so I talk I think, about lenticular design which means that it's good it's good for the game if you can find ways to get things that are complicated but covered by something that is simple so that the beginning player can't see the complexity and the advanced player can see the complexity. Um, and I think cycling has a, a very lenticular quality to it, which is understanding when you're supposed to get rid of a cycling card is actually very complex. 
I mean, many times there's obvious decisions, right? Like, I'm land shy, and I need my land. Okay, that, that's not that hard to figure out. But a lot of other times, it's like, oh, I've mapped out, I mapped out where I'm going. I understand the board state. You know what? A random card is better than this card. And understanding when that is so and when that is not actually is a very complex thing. But for the beginning player, it's very simple. You know, and, and it, it's simple in two ways. One is the, the actual mechanics are simple. I got it. I take this, I throw it away. I you know, spend two mana, throw this away, or spend whatever amount of mana I am, throw this away, and then I get a new card. Okay, the functionality. But also, understanding why you would do it, you know what I'm saying? And that a, a lesser player could think of reasons why, oh, I see why I wouldn't want this, you know, and, and they can imagine why they would do it. And that, that makes for a nice, simple mechanic. You understand what it does, you understand why you would do it. Um, and cycling does both those things. But cycling does this other thing, which is nice, in which that there's a rolling amount of understanding of when to use the mechanic. You know, like buyback, for example, was another very interesting mechanic where, you know, uh, a lot of times the inexperienced player doesn't want to give up options. And so whenever there's extra options, like buyback or like kicker, they are reticent to use the card until they get the extra amount. Which is fine, by the way. They still have their fun. They get to do what they want with the card. But the better player goes, oh, the role here is not always to use it. The role is to figure out when it is right to use it and when it's not to use it. You know? In fact, I used to joke that, like, if you're playing cycling correctly, you know, at the end of the game, you should never have it in your hand, right? You should figure out the exact time when I shouldn't be cycling it back this time because I don't need it anymore. Um, I, I'm not cycling. Uh, sorry. Bye back. Uh, so cycling, I, I, cycling to me is one of the perfect mechanics uh, I mean, uh, of non-evergreen. In fact, it might be one of the most perfect non-evergreen mechanics we've ever made because it's simple, yet it has complexity built into it. That, you know, it is... It helps smooth mana, which is an important part of the game. You know, it helps create uh, a nice dramatic moment. Like, one of the things I talk a lot about is... Um, randomness is good for, the, for games in general. That you want exciting moments. You want moments where you don't know what's going to happen. You know? And I'm not against... There's plenty of games in which... You know, there's not a lot of randomness. But I, I think that part of what makes games fun is not always knowing what's going to happen. And cycling, in addition to everything else I'm talking about, also has this wonderful thing of, I don't know what I'm getting when I trade it in. I get a little surprise. Every time I use the mechanic, ooh, there's a little moment of, oh, what am I getting? You know, and I feel like that's another important part of the mechanic. Um, in fact, I, I, it's one, one of the reasons I, I think it's, in some ways, the perfect mechanic is, it does so many things so well, but, like, so subtly, you know, like, the randomness is subtle because players anticipate and expect an unknown quality when drawn, so they don't think about that as being random. You know, it has this nice complexity in it, but it's buried so that you don't quite realize how complex it is. You know, it smooths mana, and it does all this wonderful stuff. But anyway, I, I'm driving up to work right now, so it is time to wrap up here, but I, hopefully today I just was hoping to, like, sort of walk you through and say, hey... You know, uh, mechanics are tools. As a designer, you want to understand your tools. You know, that uh, in some ways the cycling is, I don't know whether it's the screwdriver or the hammer or whatever it is, it's, it's a useful tool in magic. And the designer is trying to make use of it whenever we can. I mean, not too much, but, you know, it's a mechanic that if you say, well, cycling will be back, oh, well, of course. I mean, cycling will be back to the end of time. Um, and we will always try to find new ways and different things to do with it. But, you know, it's, in some ways, it's the perfect mechanic, so I'm always happy to use it. Anyway, I'm here at Wizards, so it is time to wrap this up. Um, so thank you very much for joining me today. It's time to go make some magic cards.